Hello and welcome back to the Champions Showdown for this Fisher Random Chess event where uh, all the top players are playing and Garry Kasparov. So in this video I'm going to show you the youngster uh, Alireza Firuja against the uh, world champion Magnus Carlsen. I'm, showing to, I'm going to show their game. So uh, well let's just get started. So let's take a quick look at the starting position. So uh, we can see that the rook is as it normally is and the knight on b1. However now comes the king and both of the bishops are in the middle. And there comes the another rook, the, the g1 knight is as normal and then here is the queen. So in my opinion the hard, uh, the hard uh, task for this, mm, for this starting setup is to make sure that you can activate your queen as well because in the, in the corner it looks very awkward. So it's quite likely that both players are going to at some point play some e4, f4, d4, something like this and also from the back side same moves and this is going to open up the, the bishops for sure. The knights are going to their normal places most likely c3, f3, maybe d2 at some point. So this looks all normal. The problem is really going to lie in activating your queen. So let's let's see how these, these superstars try to solve the problem. So Alireza started with e4, came knight c6, so knight c6 is taking away the d4 square, so white cannot expand further with d4, but Alireza decided that he can actually do this with f4, and then his plan is to play knight f3, maybe bishop f2, and put a d4 uh, on the board, and gain some space in the center. Um, maybe it's important to also emphasize the, the tournament situation, that uh, even though Carlsen was doing very well in the first uh, from the first day. He won two games and made one draw. I actually already made a video about uh, one of his games uh, against Gori Kasparov, so if you are interested, uh, go and check it out. But on the second day, actually, Carlsen already lost the game, and he is now uh, chasing the leaders. So it's quite important for Carlsen to win this game, and he actually takes quite some risk with his next move. He makes the he plays the move f5. And uh, clear that after f5 there is going to be quite some disbalance in the position. So while here white has to react, he could just push it further with e5. That would be probably uh, the more schematic reaction. But uh, while it's Fisher chess, so Alireza decided to be also quite creative and made the move e takes f5. And the idea is that now white is uh, forcing black to take back with the rook. And after you move your rook you're not allowed to castle anymore. So now it's clear that the black king is going to castle only long, so it's gonna stay there. And also, moreover, now with the tempi, white can play g4, activating his queen, chasing away this rook. So this is how the game went on, rook f8, knight c3, and here comes uh, Kazan's idea, what he had planned for, for this setup. So his idea is to play h5, very interesting positional move. So it immediately challenges this g4 pawn. Here, white cannot play h3, obviously, because after hg, hg, all of a sudden our queen is hanging. So it's not possible to do this. So basically, white, uh, white's only move to get his structure uh, together is to play g5. But after g5, this f5 square is going to be very, very weak. So black st uh, starts with a6, going to uh, route his knight to f5, the bishop probably to g6, queen to h7, so quite some domination on all these light squares. His f4 pawn could be weak. So to be frankly, I still believe that uh, black is already doing better. Carson uh, played this opening very strong. Uh, Alireza continues with knight e2, knight e7, bishop f2, some uh, developing moves, and here uh, comes Carson again, he plays the move h4. And the idea is that once you put your knight on f5, it's going to be very hard to challenge. So without h4, if you play knight f5, uh, y could probably play knight g3 immediately challenging this knight. But once uh, black played h4, knight g3 is not possible anymore. This pawn is uh, taking care of that. So, uh, well, Reza here plays the move a3, which is hard to understand. It seems like just a waste of tempi. Kazan comes knight f5. Here Reza goes with knight e4. Bishop e7, other knight to c3, b6, d3, d5, some expansion in the center, um, knight d2, bishop d6, now attacking this pawn, and here comes bishop g1. 
and here comes the the castling from black side so castling uh, as I mentioned in my previous videos is the same as in normal chess so after long castle the king goes to c8 the rook goes to d8 after short castle g8 and f8 and the other way around and also the same same uh, for the for the white color so here cards and castle long the long castle came to move a uh, knight b5 attacking this bishop goes away now finally some active plan with white bishop g4 to get some control here but after a6 knight g3 white can uh, black can challenge this bishop with bishop h5 and obviously this, this exchange of bishop is good for black so black to white took queen takes uh, back be, because this bishop was actually quite passive and now uh, black has even more control over the white square especially over f5 and here in this position also white castles so this is a bit strange so normally if your king is on e1 you're not allowed to castle because this queen is controlling the d1 square and you're not allowed to castle through check however in this position castling is not going through check because the king is already on c1 so it's allowed to long castle here so this is what alireza did and here it's worth to stop for a for a moment so basically we did the so the Fisher uh, chess part, so now both players have castled and now every rule is according to normal chess. So you can stop for a, for a bit and then uh, try to evaluate the position. So first it stands out that white is very very passive. This queen is just still in the, con in, in the corner. Uh, while this bishop is not doing too much, the knights are very much restricted. There is no real target for this, these rooks. While this e6 pawn is something that could be targeted but... Uh, it's very hard to see how to actually overload this pawn but black could just play bishop d6 that's going to be Carlsen's next move put a rook on e8 protect it and this doesn't seem like a weakness on the other hand black is doing uh, very well this knight is incredibly strong the queen is very active there is quite some pace advantage uh, thanks to h4 pawn and d5 pawn and the most important is it that this f4 pawn could be a weakness of white so yeah in this position uh Carlsen, uh essentially played positional moves he's going to continue uh, in this manner and well he seems to just destroy Alireza so uh, let's go on with the game so bishop d6 rook e1 as mentioned now Kaizen plays knight e7 so it seems like that it offers an exchange of pawns so white could take an e6 and black takes an f4 however uh, in this position actually black is already basically winning the spin along this, in, along this diagonal is incredibly strong Black is going to take one more palm, and well, black is just too active. Any sort of opening up the position favors black, because these pieces are just not in the game. So therefore, Alireza had to protect his pawn, knight e2. Now Kaizen moves around with his, his knight, bishop e3 goes a bit back. There is some uh, slow positional maneuvering here. Bishop g4, bishop g1, king b7, and actually, Alireza should realize that he really has to do something active because if he just defends passively he's going to lose at some point. So his only active plan would be to finally activate his queen and make the move c4. So essentially in the next many moves White's best chance would be just to push c4 and try to, to open up something especially for his queen. So uh, here comes knight b3 and uh, Karzan decides to not to wait any further, plays the move h3. Well, it's clear that the idea is to restrict this queen even further and to make knight h4, knight g2 coming. So here uh, Alireza defends against that with bishop f f2, so controlling the h4 square. Comes rook e8, knight goes back, uh, other knight goes back, bishop e3, knight g6, and uh, while well, here Lireza once again should make a move something like c4 and try to get some activity especially on the queen side where uh, black is not overloaded uh, yeah he, he makes once again a strange waiting move with queen e1 and essentially after this there is no no way back Carson is going to uh, cruise to victory so here you can stop the video and try to find the, the winning plan for black so as mentioned before, uh, Kazan is playing a very strong positional game. Essentially no calculation was needed uh, up to this point and even uh, not here. So he can make a simple move knight h4 with the idea to play knight g2. That's a double attack to e1 and e3. And moreover, if ever the rook 
uh, leaves from e1, then uh, the protection of this e2 knight is gone, and black can just take the knight. So here uh, Ali Reza played knight g3, but that lets the the black queen inside queen g4. We can see this f4 pawn is going to also uh, be a prey of black's pieces. So finally Ali Reza makes the move that he should have uh, played well 5-10 moves ago, c4, but it's already too late because now comes knight g2, smashing a, a huge double attack. And also these pawns are going to fall if you, you let black just take the, 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 the bishop. So here Ali Reza makes one more move, c5, <clears throat> but this is just not enough. Kazan just took the, took the rook. Here you cannot take on d6 because knight c2 takes one more piece. So Ali Reza took back on e1. But after bishop takes f4, he decided that it's, it was too much and Carson is just too strong for, for, for him. As of now, black is just up by too much material, so uh, Ali Reza resigned. So with this, uh, this game, uh, Carson actually managed to close the gap. And uh, <clears throat> after two days, he is uh, actually second, half a point behind uh, Levon Aronian. It's very interesting because Aronian and Carson are going to play in the very last round of the tournament. So unless some strange thing happens, the decisive game is going to be in the last round, round uh, 9, between uh, Levon Aronian and the world champion Magnus Carlsen. So you can guess that uh, this is going to be the next game I'm going to show you. So see you in that, in that game.